and welcome back to another video. This is American English with this guy. I'm this guy and the goal of this channel is to help you improve your English. And the goal of today's video is to help you understand some beach vocabulary. Now, I'm releasing this video in November and where I live, I shouldn't really be releasing a beach vocabulary video in November, but it was really nice today. So Jamie and I decided to leave our house, head down to the beach. It should be about 70 degrees today. And this is 2020. Nothing really makes sense anymore, right? So here we are, a beach vocabulary video in November. I had a pretty busy week this week. So it's about a week later than when I filmed at the beach. So I wanna talk about a lot of the vocabulary but it was so noisy with the waves at the beach, I wanted to record the actual words later. And now it's about 30 degrees colder. You saw it, it was 70 degrees at the beach. It's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit here now and raining. And I totally forgot, there are many viewers from Brazil who watch this channel and November might be the perfect month to do beach vocabulary for you because you guys are about to enjoy summer while we in the Northern Hemisphere are about to get ready for winter. The first vocabulary word about the beach that I want to teach you is seaweed. Seaweed. This is the stuff that often washes up on the shore during high tide. If you look at the spelling of seaweed, C-S-E-A is the C that has to do with the water. When you see S-E-E, -E, that has to do with looking at something. Now let's take weed. Weed is found in gardens. Those are the things that you don't really want. They're just there to mess up your plants or your vegetables. And weed has one other meaning in English, and that is a slang term for marijuana. So you might hear somebody smoking some weed, but seaweed is that, it can be green, can be brown, can be kind of nasty, and it will wash up on the shore and stay there until it washes back out at low tide. Right, I wanted to film more of this video outside to show you how cold it is, but it's starting to rain a little bit too much. I will finish this back at home. I'm back home now where the weather is better and I can write words on the wall a little easier. Some people like to go to the beach to see sunrise at the beginning of the day. And where I live, it's a great place to see the sunrise because the sun rises in the east we often have some really nice sunrises. When you get to the beach, you might also want to park your car in the parking lot. That's what we call it right near the beach where you park your car, the parking lot. If you get there at the end of the day, like Jamie and I did, you might see the sun set, and that is equally as beautiful as the sunrise. If you stay at the beach really late to see the sun set, you might need a place to stay overnight. And near the beach, you will often find hotels or motels. Hotels are a little bit nicer than motels, but sometimes those two words can be used interchangeably. But most of the time, hotels are nicer than motels. Outside of a hotel or a motel, you might see a sign that says vacancy or no vacancy. Vacancy means they have rooms that you can rent. No vacancy means they are full and you should try to find another hotel or motel.
At the beach I went to, they also have cottages you can rent. Some hotels or motels will have cottages and those are like little separate rooms that are not attached to the hotel or the motel. So it kind of feels like you have your own place for the night. And of course, cottages are usually a little more expensive than the hotel or motel room. People who live at the beach might live in a condominium or a condo. And a condo or a condominium is basically an apartment that you own. That's how the word changes. If somebody lives in an apartment, they rent it from another person. They pay monthly rent to stay there. A condo is an apartment the person owns and they will pay mortgage to a bank. But a condo is an apartment somebody owns. And again, you might hear the really long word condominium. Condos and condominiums, same thing. Earlier in the lesson, I used the terms high tide and low tide. Well, every ocean beach has high tide, low tide. If the tide is low, there's more beach. If the tide is high, there's less beach. When Jamie and I went to the beach that day, it was definitely low tide because there was a lot of flat sand on which we could walk. Walking on flat sand is of course easier than walking on thick sand. Some people will run on thick sand to build up their endurance so they can run longer. If you go to the beach at sunrise, you will often see people running on the sand. Because Jamie and I aren't training for a marathon, we prefer to walk on the flat sand at low tide. You can also use sand as an adjective and say that there are sandy beaches near the ocean. And that sand could be called grainy. The little bits of sand, we sometimes call those grains of sand in English, and you can say that the sand is grainy. And the sand often gets everywhere. I don't like sand, and it gets everywhere. And if it gets inside your bathing suit, and if you walk around at the beach, you might get what we call chafing or chafing. You may hear both words depending on what part of the country you are in. In the north, we say chafing, and that is when the sand rubs against your legs and your skin may become raw and red. Having the grainy sand chafe you is never fun. Some of the animals you might see at the beach are crabs, seagulls, and these little birds we call piping plovers. They are protected on the beach and it is illegal for you to harm these little birds. Dogs can be at the beach certain times of the year. In the summer, they can only be on the beach near sunrise and sunset. In the fall, winter, and spring, they are allowed to be on the beach, but they always need to be on a leash. A leash is that leather or nylon or string thing that the owner holds to keep the dog near them. On the beach, there is a leash law, a law that requires all dogs to be on leashes. But in some of the videos I took today, you might see that not every owner will keep their dog on a leash at all times. If the dog is well behaved, most people at the beach, sometimes they are called beach goers, most beach goers will not mind as long as the dog doesn't bother them. We also need to talk about footprints that can be left in the sand or paw prints if a dog leaves them in the sand.
or hoof prints. Those are what horses will leave in the sand. And on the day that Jamie and I went to the beach, we saw many horses at the beach. And the strange thing about the word hoof is that when there is only one, you say hoof. When there is more than one and it becomes plural, it becomes hooves. I don't know why I didn't invent the language. I only teach it. When people go to the beach, they often love to hear the sound of the waves crashing. That is a verb we often use with waves crashing along the beach or crashing on the beach. Waves are crashing on the beach. You can often pick up seashells on the beach. You can often build sandcastles on the beach. And some people are crazy enough to surf in the waves. And some people are crazy enough to surf on the waves at the beach. And when it is really cold, you'll often see surfers wearing wetsuits. Wetsuits will keep the surfers warm when the water is really cold. Speaking of surf, surfers, there is a type of meal served near the beach called surf and turf. Surf means there will be a meat that comes from the ocean served alongside a meat that comes from the land. Surf is the sea. Turf is also another word we call for land. Some football games and soccer games are played on AstroTurf. A typical surf and turf dinner is lobster paired with steak. That is what some restaurants call surf and turf. And as you can imagine, it's usually pretty expensive. But when I go to the beach, I don't like expensive food. I like really cheap food and some cheap food that can be found at the beach is called pier fries. Those are French fries served near the beach. And where I live, we will often put lots of salt, lots of vinegar, and lots of ketchup on those fries to make them taste better. And the reason we call them pier fries is that often near the beach, there is a pier, usually a wooden structure that goes out into the sea for a little bit. They will often have souvenir shops on that pier, maybe restaurants, maybe even an arcade or two. And often if you have a pier near the beach, you will also have a Ferris wheel which some people love to ride when they're on vacation at the beach. Unfortunately, right now, most of the shops near the beach where I live are boarded up. That is a phrasal verb we use when restaurants, shops protect themselves from the winter. They will actually put boards or maybe bits of metal over their windows, over their walls, so that people will know they are closed for the winter. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. I hope you learned a little something. If you don't mind, hit that like button 
If you're looking for more videos, right up there is one I made at an American hotel. Below that is an American breakfast video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.